So good evening everyone, I'm Dr. Guru Sandhya and the class for today is anesthesia for geriatric patients. So why are we even having this as a different subset or different class for discussion is elderly people or geriatric population is nowadays associated with vast number of comorbid illness and that they are presenting to us in vast majority of uh, numbers for any surgeries may be elective or emergencies. And we, it is imperative that we understand the pathophysiology and physiology of aging to treat them appropriately and give an improved perioperative outcome. So by definition, an elderly is a patient who is around 65 to 74 years. An aged is a patient who is 75 to 84 years. And very old is a patient who is more than 85 years. So whenever you get a patient for geriatric population, whenever you get a system, uh, may it be respiratory system or uh, the cardiovascular system, whenever you talk about physiology of the changes, you always talk as anatomical changes as well as the physiological changes which would occur. So first I will be discussing about the physiological changes that would happen in geriatric population. So in anatomical changes in the upper respiratory tract, the patient is mostly edentulous and there will be loss of buccal pad of fat and there will be decreased cervical spine extension and joint stiffness. So all these will adapt to a condition wherein we will have a difficult mask ventilation. And in the lower respiratory tract, there is loss of elastic recoil and hence the lung will become more compliant. In the musculoskeletal system of the respiratory system per se, there is muscle loss, there is intercostal muscle loss and there is kyphosis and rib calcifications that can be diaphragmatic flattening because of diaphragmatic muscle loss and decreased respiratory muscle strength. So the physiological changes in respiratory system would be wherein uh, we might have seen this graph um, the more often than not wherein you would say there is a closing volume and closing capacity which exists. At 45 years of age when the patient is upright the FRC will reach the closing volume and uh, the patient will not be able to exhale further. At the age of 65 years of age, when the patient is like, this is in standing and this is in supine. When the patient is at 65 years of age, when the patient is even standing, the closing volume will approach FRC and hence the patient will have room air desaturation. So this physiology must be kept in mind that the closing volume will approximate to the FRC. In patients who are elderly, there will be decreased vital capacity and increased functional residual volume and increased residual volume. There will also be decrease in inspiratory as well as expiratory reserve volume, but the total lung capacity will remain the same because of concomitant increase in the residual volume and functional residual volume. So these aged patients, they are associated with decreased pulmonary reserve because of the concomitant loss and elastic recoil, and they will have decreased gas exchange, which will lead to the increased V by Q mismatch in the perioperative period. They are also more prone for atelectasis because they have increased work of breathing and they have had because of the decreased muscle strength and they have decreased vital capacity. And there is always an interplay between the functional residual capacity and the closing capacity. So more than 65 years of age, even in this upright position, the patient is prone for desaturation. And there are surgical factors like intraoperative positioning, like maybe uh, Trendelenburg position, wherein head down is given. The abdominal contents are going to push the thorax. And whenever there is pneumoperitoneum, which is involved, or pneumo thorax which is involved or new capnothorax which is involved for a VATS procedure. So all these can lead to perioperative decreased in um, lung uh, recruitment and lead to atelectasis and that can be treated by applying effective amount of PEEF if the patient is under general anesthesia and in the post-operative period and in the pre-operative period you can teach the patient for in central spirometry. Chest physiotherapy and ambulation can help in uh, recruiting the lungs in the perioperative period and decrease the atelectasis. And these elderly patients are also more prone for aspiration because they have very weak pharyngeal muscles and there is a decrease in the cough reflex and the upper airway reflex because of decrease in the muscle strength. And they have decreased mucociliary clearance and decreased esophageal motility and delayed gastric emptying. So all these will propensate a patient to 
uh, get aspiration more and the treatment would or the preventive strategies would involve whenever it is possible when the patient is in full stomach and whenever it is possible always administer neuraxial techniques and you always avoid longer acting neuromuscular blocking agents and you reverse adequately see that the top ratio is more than 0.9 and always whenever possible use the opioid sparing strategy using multimodal analgesia with usage of paracetamol and regional nerve blocks. And in surgeries which are prone for aspiration, you can also try to neutralize the stomach pH by using sodium citrate preoperatively. So the central changes in respiratory system shall be the ventilatory responses to both hypoxia and hypercarbia is in, impaired. So those who are having uh, OSA, they may not even have the respiratory drive even though the saturation is dropping to 70 because they are more often than not desaturating to less than 70% when the patient is having severe OSA. And the respiratory depression propensity for both benzodiazepines and opioids are increased in elderly. Coming on to the changes in musculoskeletal system, the lean body mass will decline over a period of time and the subcutaneous fat also will decrease. So what will happen is whenever you are giving an IV cannula, the IV cannula will slip because there is no fat to hold the uh, intravenous, intravenous line in place. So you will always see that you are able to see the IV line, but you are not able to give the IV line properly because there is no subcutaneous factors which is involved. And there is decreased muscle strength so that the patient can have increased frequency of falls. And there is impaired wound healing because of the impairment in the cutaneous blood supply. And this can be treated efficiently in the perioperative period by ensuring normothermia, good oxygenation and normoalemia. These patients may have osteoarthritis. So suppose if they are not comfortable in giving a lithotomy position, even preoperatively, if you ask them to flex their leg, if they are telling more amount of pain, and if you give them lithotomy and finish the surgery, they may have some neuropraxias. So adequate padding is essential whenever the patient is elderly. And positioning in OT is also important. Adequate padding for both ulnar as well as whenever there is a pressure sore injury may be a common peroneal nerve against the lateral head of fibula. All these places must be padded adequately to prevent any pressure sore which would occur. So coming on to the changes in cardiovascular system. In the cardiovascular system, so compared to a normal adult, the elderly patient will have an increased vascular tone. And they will also have decreased sensitivity towards the beta-2 receptors. Since because there is increased vascular tone and vascular stiffness, the blood cannot move in the same rheology as it moves in an adult and blood stasis can happen. That will predispose the patient to the venous thromboembolism episodes. Any patient who is elderly who has been smoking can have a venous thromboembolism episode because if they are immobile also, that's virtual triad. No? So there is whenever there is a venous stasis, that can lead to hypercoagulability. So these patients are more prone for venous thromboembolism. Any patient who is postmenopausal and on is, um, uh, estrogen therapy, again, they are more prone for uh, venous thromboembolism. So the changes in myocardium are there can be myocyte depth. So the myocyte itself can be reduced in number in the heart. And there is increase in size of myocardium and fibrosis as the age advances. And more often than not, the systolic function of the heart is preserved till the later stages of life if there are no coronary artery diseases which is involved. But the diastolic function is what is more commonly affected. And diastolic dysfunction is what is more common in the patients who are elderly. So the relaxation property of the heart is lost or decreased. So whenever the patient is having concomitant hypertension, there will also be a concentric LVH or left ventricular hypertrophy which happens. And a diastolic dysfunction which is added can lead to impaired diastolic filling. So whenever there is an impaired diastolic filling, one thing is very, very important for the patient to maintain an adequate cardiac output and that is the atrial kick. If the atrial kick is lost, then the patient is not going to maintain the forward flow and maintain an effective forward cardiac output. So in an elderly patient, it is imperative that you maintain sinus rhythm at any point of time. And these patients, because the fibrosis can happen in the conductive systems as well. So whenever there is 
conductive system fibrosis it can lead to any bundle branch block or complete heart block as the age advances and the most common arrhythmia as the patient advances in age is atrial fibrillation which can happen in one ten, one in 10 patients about 80 years so in atrial fibrillation if the uh, rhythm control is possible it is imperative that you attempt a rhythm control at first time but suppose if the patient is not opt for rhythm control you can go for rate control again which will help